Uh, Tapiwa, good evening uh, to you. I, I don't think there would have been many people who thought we'd talk about Zimbabwe wanting to rejoin the Commonwealth, but they're barreling through. Uh, they're now in the second stage. Why, good evening, do you think uh, Zimbabwe wants back in? Good evening and thank you for having me and good evening to the viewers and listeners of PNCA. Well, it's, it's rather a, a sudden turnaround of events from the new regime uh, led by Emerson Mnangagwa. By virtue of looking at the campaign that Robert Mugabe used to have where he would say Zimbabwe will never be a colony again. And we look at the new dispensation and what Zana PF has been sending for and the true ethos of the Commonwealth. Well, Commonwealth uh, is a group, it's an association of former British colonies, which is formed and defined only primarily by the virtue of common countries, 54 to, to, to say in terms of numbers, and they've got something which is in common, which is English language, and it is led by Queen Elizabeth II, and currently it is led by the British Prime Minister. So in essence, this is going back again to be a collective countries which were formerly uh, colonized by Britain, which is the UK, which in, in, in my own understanding is a deviation from people, from countries, from nations being sovereign and from nations being sent alone nations and having African nations standing just for themselves as Africans. I, I understand if I, if I cast my mind back to 2003, the issue between Zimbabwe and London uh, at that time was all to do with land reform in 2003. There are going to be critics who are going to suggest, even under the new regime, Tapiwa, that this hasn't really changed very much. Uh, apart from wanting to be back in the Commonwealth, do you think the Commonwealth will let Zimbabwe back in? Well, chances are high that the Commonwealth will let Zimbabwe break in. But if we go to the reason why Zimbabwe uh, withdrew or suspended in, in 2002 and then in 2003 re withdrew from Commonwealth, why it's primarily because of the sudden turnaround of things in the country of Zimbabwe. Going back into 1980, when Robert Mugabe took over the reins of the country, he then had a sudden turnaround of things, good education, good leadership skills, good economy for the country of Zimbabwe. Come 1998, 1999, the, the working class community was so disgruntled, they went into the streets, they demonstrated year 1999, 2000, with the formation of the opposition party, the movement for democratic change. The first elections where Zanu PF was challenged, there was violence, the elections were not free and fair, but were free. A flee and fear encounter in 2002, and that is where the problems of, 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 of Zimbabwe and Commonwealth and British started to manifest themselves in the public domain. And as a result, the Zimbabwean government, through the leadership of Robert Mugabe and Zanu PF, there was a lot of violence. There was reading which was involved in the election of, of Zimbabwe. So as a result, there were sanctions which were put on Zimbabwe because in addition to the violence, the government of Zimbabwe used the land as a political tool to garner the election. Now, faced with a huge uh, uh, human, rights, human rights abuses, the Zimbabwean government had another in 2002 election, another way, another platform to redeem themselves but when the Zimbabwean government fails to redeem itself, that is when the suspension through Troika, the suspension was made, uh, was made in the until now. The Zimbabwean government tried to go through the Commonwealth Ministerial Action Group to say, look what has happened in the 2002 election. What has happened in the 2000 referendum is going to change. We're going to respect the human rights. We're going to uphold the human rights. Mm. And, and the third part is that the human rights of the Commonwealth, they are in the Harare Declaration, the 1991 Harare Declaration under Chogam. That is where we have the issues of human rights. And Zimbabwe was accused of faltering in the Harare, Harare Declaration. Number one, what Zimbabwe was found short of was the issue of human rights abuses. Number two, the allegations which were put on Zimbabwe was the issue of rigging elections undermining the economy of Zimbabwe and contravening the basic principles of the Commonwealth Declaration. And as a result, Zimbabwe was kicked out 
of, uh, of the Commonwealth. And this is obviously now where they're going to try and, uh, and prove to the Commonwealth, to Piwe, that they have gotten on top of all those issues. Obviously, economically, it makes a lot more sense uh, for Zimbabwe to try and be part of the Commonwealth, get back on the global stage. Uh, we wait to see what happens, but that seems to make sense as to why uh, the uh, government of Zimbabwe uh, trying to get back in and realign themselves uh, with the Commonwealth. My thanks to you for joining us this evening. Africa expert Tapiwe Diamond Chadia uh, joining us on ENCA.